It was late in the evening and the sun was slowly setting in the west, casting its lingering glow onto the land lucky enough to feel its retreating warmth. Two figures could be a sea. Traveling along the road that lead from the border of Kawa no Kuni, river country, to Tenzaka Gai, a small but lively town that was a fair distance from Kanoha. One of the figures was a tall male standing about six foot four. He seemed to be in his early forties or so, although he carried himself as someone half that age. He had extreme and spiky white hair tied into a ponytail along with two shoulder-length bangs that framed both sides of his face. Red lines ran down from underneath his eyes to his jawline. And unique head protector with the kanji of oil was emblazoned across the metallic object firmly rested upon his forehead. This man was Jiraiya, the famed toad sage of the Densetsu no Sanin, legendary three ninja, a former student of Saratobi Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage, 3rd Hokage, S.H. Kami, god of ninja, and the professor. Jiraiya is also the author of the popular adult fiction book series called Aika Aika and is a self-proclaimed super pervert. The man walking next to him was roughly 5 foot 11 and looked to be in his early to mid-twenties. He wore the standard Kanoha ninja uniform, a green flak jacket a prop. His rank along with a short-sleeved and high-collared white coat with red flames adorning the edges that reached just past his knees. He had bright blue eyes and spiky blonde H. Bangs that stretched down to chin length and surrounded both sides of his face. He was considered quite handsome by the female populace of his native village and even beyond. The point that some instances of infatuation came from his physical appearance alone. This man was Namikaze Minato, the famed Kanoha no Kiroi Senko, Kanoha's Yellow Flash, Yandame Hokage, 4th Hokage, and former student of Jiraiya. The two famous shinobi were on their way back to Kanoha after successfully negotiating and signing an alliance with Sunigekir no Sato, village hidden in the sand, and its low. Yandame Kazakage, 4th Kazakage. Normally, it would be considered strange for a Kage of any village to be traveling in such a small party since, Whenever it was suitable, he would be accompanied by at least A.S. Umbu or other shinobi of Jonin level. However, this obviously wasn't just any normal traveling duo. With both being Kage level shinobi, the thought of even planning to attack them when they were together would be seen as complete lunacy by a majority of the strongest fight. They're in the elemental nations. They were both considered among the strongest in their own respective generations, maybe even the strongest depending on who was asked, A. Eh? Only be stronger as a cohesive unit made up by a longtime teacher and student. In short, a protective detail was virtually unnecessary since an attack on the two was practically suicide. Well, Minato, at least we made it to Tanzaka Gai. Guess we won't have to sleep out on the forest floor tonight, Jiraiya spoke jokingly with a smile and a slight nudge to his pup. Minato let out a small chuckle. I suppose you're right, he replied before looking a little wistful. And even with the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, to Trav. I'd rather take a little time to relax and stay away from the paperwork back home. Celebrating a new alliance by checking into a nice hotel and going to a bar in the town sound. Perfect excuse, doesn't it? The blonde nudged back good-naturedly. Now you're talking, the toad sage exclaimed in enthusiasm. Sake sounded perfect at the moment. Hell, we might even get you lucky tonight, he said cheekily as he smack. On the back, making the blonde slightly buckle in his steps. Soon enough the two shinobi found an adequate hotel and booked a room immediately after entering the decently sized gambling village. It wasn't that much longer after that tea went to the best bar near their hotel and unexpectedly met up with a familiar face enjoying her own free time. The person they found in the bar was a woman with blonde hair, of which was tied into a long ponytail that reached down to her lower hip with chin-length strands framing both s. Her face, a diamond-shaped mark imprinted on her forehead and striking brown eyes. If she were standing she'd be about 5 foot 4 with a frame that was covered by a gris with a kanji for gamble on it. 
Underneath her robe was a sleeveless gray kimono shirt along a dark obi around her waist and matching her short pants. However, her most prom features were her extremely sizable breasts, which were about 106 centimeters according to Jiraiya's keen intellect. She's what most individuals would coincide. Extremely attractive. The toad sage's eyes lit up in pleased recognition. Heim. My, it's been a while. I didn't expect to see you here tonight. The woman that Jiraiya called out to was none other than Senju Tsunade, the slug princess and only female member of the Densetsu no Sanin. Along with being the last living. Of the Senju clan she was also the granddaughter of Senju Hashirama, the Shodai Hokage, first Hokage, and grandniece of Senju Tobarama, the Naidame Hokage, second Hoka. Her aforementioned role in the Densetsu no Sanin, having the Sandame Hokare as a teacher along with Jiraiya went without saying. Besides those bigger facts about herself, S. Also credited by most as being the most beautiful woman in the world, which was of no surprise to those who have gazed upon her. It was also thanks to her efforts in healing a poisons that Kanoha was even able to win the Second Great Shinobi World War, earning her the title of being the greatest Irionin, medical nin, in the elemental nations. When Tsunade turned to see who called to her the woman expected to see a debt collector. However, she was instead greeted to the sight of her old teammate Jiraiya and his FO. Student and current Hokage, Namikaze Minato. Jiraiya, Minato. What are you two doing here? asked Tsunade as she set down her saucer of sake and turned around on her bar stool. Minato and I just arrived in town just a little while ago. We just trekked through Kawa from Suna after negotiating an alliance between Suna and Kanoha, replied Jiraiya with a hidden smile. The famed medic noticed the corner of his mouth twitch upwards. So I take it that the discussions went well since you're here? Celebrating, maybe, queried the slug princess. Yeah, they ended fine, great, actually. Although the whole process was tough thanks to the Yandame Kasakage. He kept on trying to make the alliance favor Sunamorin's tea. Making it equal to both villages. It also didn't help that he made several snide remarks about Kanoha being too soft and weak, replied Minato with a frown. He didn't like the Yandame Kasakage much. He often found him to be a rather cold and uncaring individual, especially with the way he ignored or passed off his pregnant wife. Year old daughter and two year old son as if they meant little to him. It was late in the evening and the sun was slowly setting in the west, casting its lingering glow onto the land lucky enough to feel its retreating warmth. Two figures could be a sea. Traveling along the road that lead from the border of Kawa no Kuni, river country, to Tenzaka Gai, a small but lively town that was a fair distance from Kanoha. One of the figures was a tall male standing about six foot four. He seemed to be in his early forties or so, although he carried himself as someone half that age. He had extreme and spiky white hair tied into a ponytail along with two shoulder-length bangs that framed both sides of his face. Red lines ran down from underneath his eyes to his jawline. Unique head protector with the kanji of oil was emblazoned across the metallic object firmly rested upon his forehead. This man was Jiraiya, the famed toad sage of the Densetsu no Sanin, legendary three ninja, a former student of Saratobi Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage, third Hokage, sh. Kami, god of ninja, and the professor. Jiraiya is also the author of the popular adult fiction book series called Aika Aika and is a self-proclaimed super pervert. The man walking next to him was roughly 5 foot 11 and looked to be in his early to mid 20s. He wore the standard Kanoha ninja uniform, a green flak jacket a prop. His rank along with a short-sleeved and high-collared white coat with red flames adorning the edges that reached just past his knees. He had bright blue eyes and spiky blonde H. Bangs that stretched down to chin length and surrounded both sides of his face. He was considered quite handsome by the female populace of his native village and even beyond. The point that some instances of infatuation came from his physical appearance alone. 
This man was Namikaze Minato, the famed Kanoha no Kiroi Senko, Kanoha's Yellow Flash, Yandame Hokage, 4th Hokage, and former student of Jiraiya. The two famous shinobi were on their way back to Kanoha after successfully negotiating and signing an alliance with Sunigekir no Sato, village hidden in the sand, and its low. Yandame Kazakage, 4th Kazakage. Normally, it would be considered strange for a Kage of any village to be traveling in such a small party since, whenever it was suitable, he would be accompanied by at least A.S. Umbu or other shinobi of Jonin level. However, this obviously wasn't just any normal traveling duo. With both being Kage level shinobi, the thought of even planning to attack them when they were together would be seen as complete lunacy by a majority of the strongest fight. They're in the elemental nations. They were both considered among the strongest in their own respective generations, maybe even the strongest depending on who was asked, A. Eh? Only be stronger as a cohesive unit made up by a longtime teacher and student. In short, a protective detail was virtually unnecessary since an attack on the two was practically suicide. Well, Minato, at least we made it to Tanzaka Gai. Guess we won't have to sleep out on the forest floor tonight. Jiraiya spoke jokingly with a smile and a slight nudge to his pup. Minato let out a small chuckle. I suppose you're right, he replied before looking a little wistful. And even with the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, to Trav. I'd rather take a little time to relax and stay away from the paperwork back home. Celebrating a new alliance by checking into a nice hotel and going to a bar in the town sound. Perfect excuse, doesn't it? The blonde nudged back good-naturedly. Now you're talking, the toad sage exclaimed in enthusiasm. Sake sounded perfect at the moment. Hell, we might even get you lucky tonight, he said cheekily as he smack. On the back, making the blonde slightly buckle in his steps. Soon enough the two shinobi found an adequate hotel and booked a room immediately after entering the decently sized gambling village. It wasn't that much longer after that tea. Went to the best bar near their hotel and unexpectedly met up with a familiar face enjoying her own free time. The person they found in the bar was a woman with blonde hair, of which was tied into a long ponytail that reached down to her lower hip with chin length strands framing both s. Her face, a diamond-shaped mark imprinted on her forehead and striking brown eyes. If she were standing she'd be about 5 foot 4 with a frame that was covered by a gree. With a kanji 4 gamble on it. Underneath her robe was a sleeveless grey kimono shirt along a dark obi around her waist and matching her short pants. However, her most prom features were her extremely sizable breasts which were about 106 centimeters according to Jiraiya's keen intellect. She's what most individuals would coincide. Extremely attractive. The Toad Sage's eyes lit up in pleased recognition. Haim. My, it's been a while. I didn't expect to see you here tonight. The woman that Jiraiya called out to was none other than Senju Tsunade, the slug princess and only female member of the Densetsu no Sanni. Along with being the last living of the Senju clan she was also the granddaughter of Senju Hashirama, the Shodai Hokage, first Hokage, and grandniece of Senju Tobarama, the Naidame Hokage, second Hoka. Her aforementioned role in the Densetsu no Sanin, having the Sandame Hokare as a teacher along with Jiraiya went without saying. Besides those bigger facts about herself, s. Also credited by most as being the most beautiful woman in the world, which was of no surprise to those who have gazed upon her. It was also thanks to her efforts in healing a poisons that Kanoha was even able to win the Second Great Shinobi World War, earning her the title of being the greatest Irionin, medical nin, in the elemental nations. When Tsunade turned to see who called to her the woman expected to see a debt collector. However, she was instead greeted to the sight of her old teammate Jiraiya and his FO. Student and current Hokage, Namikaze Minato. Jiraiya, Minato. What are you two doing here? Asked Tsunade as she set down her saucer of sake and turned around on her barstool. Minato and I just arrived in town just a little while ago. 
We just trekked through Kawa from Suna after negotiating an alliance between Suna and Kanoha, replied Jiraiya with a hidden smile. The famed medic noticed the corner of his mouth twitch upwards. So I take it that the discussions went well since you're here? Celebrating, maybe, queried the slug princess. Yeah, they ended fine, great, actually. Although the whole process was tough thanks to the Yandame Kasakage. He kept on trying to make the alliance favor Sunamorin's tea. Making it equal to both villages. It also didn't help that he made several snide remarks about Kanoha being too soft and weak, replied Minato with a frown. He didn't like the Yandame Kasakage much. He often found him to be a rather cold and uncaring individual, especially with the way he ignored or passed off his pregnant wife. Year-old daughter and two-year-old son as if they meant little to him. Tsunade, what are you doing here in my room, he bluntly asked. Your room. This is my room, you idiot. I should be the one asking that, not you. Not to mention why are you naked in my bed, exclaimed Tsunade and she pointed at him a with a shaking finger. Ha! Huh, sounded Minato as he looked down at himself and saw that he was indeed naked as a jaybird. Upon realizing this the young man's face turned bright red before he quick. Grabbed a nearby pillow to hastily cover little Minato. W what happened last night? The last thing I can remember is the two of us drinking and talking while Sensei was passed out. Minato groaned as he held his head from the lin pain. The last thing I remember was. Tsunade drawled as she tried to remember what had exactly happened. When the memory hit her their activities came back in a series of faws. Flashbacks, making the female Sanmin suddenly turn bright red in embarrassment just like her fellow blonde. Weirdly enough, as Minato watched Tsunade's face turning various shades of red, he too began to remember what they did last night causing him to blush even brighter than B. That was even impossible. Quickly enough, an angry Tsunade focused all of her attention at Minato and pointed accusingly at him. You damn bastard. You took advantage of me when I was too drunk to think straight. Minato broke out of his momentary embarrassment. Me? I wasn't the one who was flirting like a hormonal fangirl at the bar. You were the one who started it all. Minato Reedier. Defensively. Don't you dare try and blame me. You admitted it yourself that you had a thing for me since your genin days last night. That's why you decided to take advantage of me when. Vulnerable. Hey now, I wasn't the one who invited me into your room. It was all your idea to come here, so if there was anyone who was taken advantage of, it was me. You had your way. Like some doctor and patient roleplay in the bedsheets against my will. For the next 10 minutes the two continued to try and place the blame on one another, but eventually they reluctantly agreed that it was both of their faults. It wasn't long at all. They then hurriedly got dressed and decided that they would keep what happened a secret between the two of them, especially from a certain super pervert they both knew. If J ever found out he would never let either of them live it down and would most likely become another installment in his next book. After a few minutes, Minato quickly left Tsunade's room and decided to head back to his own on a lower floor, hoping that Jiraiya hadn't woken up yet. That is, if his sensei made. Just as he was about to open the door an all too familiar voice cried out to him. Hey, Minato! When Minato turned around he saw his sensei coming towards him from the stairs leading to the ground floor of the hotel. Jiraiya continued. Glad to see that you're up. I figured you'd still be sleeping like a stone from all the fun last night. You were about to come look for me, weren't you? Jiraiya A. He came up to the blonde. Uh, yeah. That's right, Sensei, Minato let out nervously while secretly and immensely glad that Jiraiya apparently didn't make it back to see that he was absent from their shah. The Toad Sage's face then gained a skeptical and semi-serious impression. It seems that I was left passed out in the bar by myself. I was even thrown out on the street where. Happened to wake up a little bit ago, Jiraiya narrowed his eyes at the young Hokage, 
So why didn't you bring me back to our room last night? Well, uh, you see, the thing was, um... Stuttered out a nervous Minato as he tried to come up with a believable excuse, and failing quite miserably at that if his facial express was anything to go by. It was at this time that Jiraiya detected a certain scent coming from the young man's person. Minato, what's that smell coming from you? Jiraiya closed in uncomfortably close and began to sniff his clothes. Is that perfume? He asked curiously. Minato began to get even more nervous as he silently cursed himself for not showering. It was extremely easy to deduce that he must have gotten some of Tsunade's perfume on. Clothing when they were becoming familiar with each other. He knew that if his sensei recognized the smell he would quickly understand what happened last night, something tea. Minato was confident would end his time among the land of the living. To only affirm Minato's growing fears, a knowing and very perverted smirk appeared on the toad sage's face. Listen, sensei, I can explain. Began Minato as he tried to dig up anything from his reliable intellect to get him out of the situation. What's there to explain? Jiraiya exclaimed with a surprising amount of gusto. You got lucky with some hot young lady from the bar last night, didn't you, Brad? He asked wit. Smirk growing in confidence. Ha, huh, was Minato's intelligent response, not expecting this sort of response from the older man. Well, maybe in hindsight it shouldn't be all too surprising. Come on, Minato, I can smell the perfume coming off your clothes. There's no need to hide your manly triumph. If you had just told me that from the start, I would have unday. So who is she? Was it that smoking hot barmaid that winked at you last night when she served us our drinks? Or was it one of those sexy young ladies at the nearby table who? Eyeing you. Come on, you can tell me, probed the massively grinning Jiraiya as he nudged his elbow into Minato's side proudly, wanting to hear all the details for his next book. Uh, yeah, you're right, sensei. I guess I can't hide anything from you. Minato responded after a moment before letting out a silent yet huge sigh of relief. Jiraiya was getting a close for comfort there. So are you going to tell me all about how it was or who you were with? Jiraiya continued to nudge Minato even more, hoping to get as much details as possible and grinningly. Pervert he proudly was. Deciding to change the subject quickly, Minato acted fast. Maybe later, Sensei. How about we get going? If we leave now, we can reach Kanoha before nightfall. Minato took the initiative by heading towards the stairs where Jiraiya thankfully followed. As they walked down the steps Jiraiya, in his full-fledged super pervert mode, followed. Behind him trying to get any juicy information. Come on, brat. You gotta give me something. Is she a blonde, a brunette, maybe even another redhead? Is she a moaner or a screamer? At least tell me if I know her. Come on. Give me that. Jiraiya pleaded. Minato just ignored his sensei's wishes, all the while thinking, if only you knew, sensei. If only you knew. Dash one months later Tsunade was lying down on a bed in a hotel that she and Shizun had been staying at for a while with the latter using medical ninjutsu to run a medical scan on her master. T. Medical apprentice's hand was resting above Tsunade's navel and sending Sen small pulses of chakra to examine any irregularities. She was doing this not only because her A. were critically need right now, but also because she was the only one that Tsunade trusted without question. After Shizen finished her scan on Tsunade, she confirmed what Tsunade believed when she realized that she missed her period. She was pregnant. Tsunade bolted up from her laying position and quickly started to put on her clothes back on. When I find that bastard, I'm going to kill him, revive him and then kill him again. Tsunade angrily raged in her mind, her face obviously conveying the roaring emotions with a trying to hide them. Shizen, get ready to leave. We're heading for Kanoha, Tsunade ordered heatedly. This of course shocked her apprentice, 
but it wasn't due to her master speaking in such a way at her. It was because she had said that they were going to Kanoha, the very plaque. Tsunade swore she would never step foot in again. BBBB but WWWY, Sensei, stammered a shocked Shizun as she hurriedly tried to get her things in order. Because I'm going to kill the father of my child for knocking me up. Tsunade replied angrily while finally storming out of the room for her sporadic homecoming. It was a typical and peaceful day in Kanoha. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and there was a nice, cool, gentle breeze coming in from the west. At the main gate of this currently tranquil shinobi village were two Kanoha Chunin who were happily relaxing in their assigned post. Taking advantage in the serenity surrounding. They enjoyed it all by leaning back on the two rear legs of their chairs and rested their feet on the desk of the entrance booth. Ah, this is the life, isn't it? said one of the Chunin, enjoying the huge lack of traffic going in or out of their village. Yeah, nothing to do but relax, enjoy the sun, and let life pass you by slowly, said the other with a content sigh. The first guard barely opened his eyes from their closed position to stare at a passing cloud. True, but I would still give a lot for something interesting to happen, he pondered. You know the old saying, be careful for what you wish for because you just might ge dash, the second started, but immediately stopped when he felt the ground shake beneath high. Nearly fell from his chair. When he regained his bearings and opened his eyes he saw something that made him pale and freeze with fear. Senja Tsunade was back in Kanoha after so long, and she was stomping towards them like some wrathful giant. For every step she took, the ground would crack in small spider web-like patterns, leaving a vengeful trail behind her. As she headed towards them they could practically see a B. Emanate around her that spoke of slow, agonizing pain and death. But the thing that freaked the two Chunin out the most was the disturbing red fire in her eyes that would have. Even the bravest and mightiest Kage level shinobi running for the hills. Scurrying behind Tsunade was a young teenage girl with short black hair who was carrying a small piglet in her arms. She seemed to be trying and failing to calm down her Ven master with her unheard and frantic words, but they looked to be for naught. As she and Tsunade passed by the Chunin, they saw that they were staying on the main path head. Towards the Hokage Tower. They also could have sworn they heard Tsunade saying something about killing some poor bastard along with all the different ways she was going to do. Her form disappeared and joined the general populace in the distance, the two trained soldiers of Kanoha quickly broke out of their stupors. The second Chunin paused before saying, didn't I tell you to be careful what you wish for? The first just nodded dumbly and said, who do you think pissed her off that much to come back here? I don't know. But may Kami have mercy on his soul for Tsunade-sama will not. Both men shivered at the thought of what the famed Senju Kunoichi would do to her unfortunate target and began to silently pray for the man who was about to painfully enter. Life at the hands of a vengeful slug princess. They could only imagine what would have also happened if they asked her to sign in the logbook. In the Hokage office Minato was currently sitting at his desk discussing some matter about the village with Hiruzen and Jiraiya who were sitting across from him. However, their talk was cut short W. Suddenly felt a chill run down his spine, causing him to visibly shudder. It was easy for the toad sage to notice. Hey, Minato, are you okay? Something wrong? I don't know. He looked to be deep in thought. I just, felt as if someone had walked over my grave, he replied. Before either Hiruzen or Jiraiya could reply to Minato's comment they heard loud noises coming from the other side of the double doors to the office. I don't care if he is in a meeting with Kami himself. I'm going in there and you can't stop me, shouted an angry female voice that was unfortunately familiar to. Three men. Immediately the three started to hear various noises coming from behind the closed doors. There seemed to be some scuffling, random things breaking and maybe even bones. A man screaming in pain and a woman screaming in abject horror. Even after years of violent experience under their belts, none of the men were prepared when the double doors were knocked off of their hinges due to one of the umbu guards. 
outside being thrown into it with a righteous fury. The elite shinobi then continued his flight and smashed through the window that was behind Minato and overlooking the villag. Double doors chasing after him towards the streets below and causing the three men in the office to duck for cover. As they raised their heads after a moment they were greeted with a sight that would have put the Shinigami to shame, a vengeful looking Tsunade with fires of unholy rage burr around her form and licking away at the ceiling. The sight was made all the worse for Minato since Tsunade locked her eyes firmly onto him. Minato could swear that if looks coup, he'd be nothing more than a smoking crater where he sat. Behind Tsunade the three men peered out into the waiting hall outside the Hokage office and observed her path of hell. The place looked as if a bomb had gone off with cracks and holes on the floor, ceiling, and walls. They saw the secretary desperately run and disappear around the corner, trying to get as far away from the walking hurricane as fast a humanly possible while the other Ambu guard was groaning in pain on the floor. None of the men could blame him since he now looked like a human-sized pretzel with his arms. Clearly being broken and bent in a position that were simply not natural. They would do good to remember to send him a card and some flowers in the hospital. Directly behind Tsunade was Shizun who had grabbed onto the back end of the Senju's green Hayori in a futile attempt to hold her back. Since the young medic means sandals we Continuously being dragged along the debris-ridden floor the men guessed any of her efforts were no match for her master. Tsunade finally ended her hunt when she raised her hand and pointed accusingly at the blonde Hokage. There you are, you bastard. When I get my hands on you I'm going to rip out your balls through your ass, roared the furious Senju, causing the three men to subconsciously tee. Step back in fear and cover their manhoods at the mental image their minds had conjured up. Suddenly, two more Ambu who were hidden in the rafters of the office appeared in front of Minato to protect their Hokage. Tsunade-sama, please stop your advance towards the Hokage or else we'll have no choice but to use fork dash, spoke one of the Ambu but froze midward when Tsunade locked eye. Him and saw nothing but promises of pain, suffering, and a dash of living hell on earth in those honey-colored orbs. Tsunade turned her glare to the second umbu and the man could swear that her eyes were drilling holes into his head. She then spoke in a tone that all but guaranteed pain and he did not listen and obey. If you and your friend here know what's good for you, the both of you will move and stay out of my way. Because if you don't, I will do far worse to you both than what I did w. Friend back there when he tried to stop me. Without removing her gaze from them, she pointed back at the still groaning umbu behind her that was now a human pretzel, in case by the time I'm done with you, the medic means won't be able to tell the difference between your asses and your heads and you will both be choking on your own balls. When the two umbu looked at what had become of their comrade, they quietly gulped behind their masks, looked at one another, and deeply pondered their choices. The first stop. To try defend their Hokage with their lives like any true umbu member but of course they would most likely be killed or suffer a worse fate than the one their twisted comrade ha endured. The second choice was that they could move aside and let Tsunade through where she would proceed to dismember and most likely kill their Hokage, but they would L. The choice was clear. The two Ambu silently nodded in agreement and as if they could read each other's mind they turned to Minato who was looking at the in silent curiosity before they spoke in straw. Unison. Forgive us, Hokage-sama, but we enjoy living too much and having our body parts the way they are now," spoke the two Ambu together at which point they both used a shunts. Get the pretzel-shaped Ambu and then used it again to make their escape. None of their comrades would blame them. Cowards, the both of them. What happened to protecting and serving the Hokage with your lives? Minato thought angrily, although at the way that Tsunade was looking at H starting to think that the two shinobi might have had the right idea since he was wishing that he was anywhere but his office at the moment. As Tsunade walked towards Minato with the intent to reach over his desk and begin wringing his neck, Jiraiya bravely or foolishly, depending on who was asked, placed himself. Minato and the wrathful Senju. Hey now, Haim, calm down and tell us what's going on. 
I don't know what you think Minato did to you, but I really think he's gotta be innocent. He's been here the whole time. Would never do anything that would get you this mad at him. I know him better than that, said the Toad Sage, really hoping he would be able to calm his angry teammate down. Although as he tried, he recalled only one other time ever seeing Tsunade this mad, the one time he ever peeked in on her when she was in the Kanoha Hot Springs. Here the whole time. Here the whole time except for that night at Tenzaka Guy where he got me drunk and we spent the night at that shitty hotel where he knocked me up, s. The surprisingly angrier medic. Ha! Huh. Jiraiya muttered as all sounds seized around them. He honestly couldn't quite believe what he just heard and was soon joined by Hiruzen and Minato who were equally G. Smacked. Are you all deaf or are you too thick-head to understand? Well, here it is, plain and simple so that even you dumbass can understand. The other three were still frozen. That bastard student of yours got me pregnant, she roared at her teammate. This of course got an immediate reaction from the famous shinobi. Hiruzen's eyes grew to the size of saucers on his wrinkled face as his jaw hit the floor. Jiraiya was doing a perfect imitation of a gaping fish since his brain had shut down, simply not being able to compute what his ears just absorbed. Minato, he just fainted. Shizen couldn't blame them since she was in the same boat when she found out. To say that the medical apprentice was shocked when her sensei told her that she had slept W. Yandame Hokage and was now carrying his child, something that many women all over Kanoha would have loved to have done, would be like saying that Jiraiya was only a little perverted. Susanade-sama, please calm down. All this stress can't be good for the baby, Shizen pleaded gently at the end. Surprisingly, this comment seemed to have gotten through to Tsunade. She paused to gather her thoughts and started to calm down a bit after taking a deep breath. Quickly Hiruzen got over his shock and went over to Minato to awaken the young Kage. When Minato's eyes started to open up his predecessor helped him up onto his feet before the male blonde looked towards the cause of all the excitement. Why why you're pee pee preg pregnant? Minato barely uttered above a whisper, the shock still clearly in his system. Isn't that what I just said, you idiot? Tsunade retorted with gritted teeth, severely wanting to gauge his eyes out with a blunt senban while simultaneously trying to control he. BBB but why you can't be, I mean, Minato stuttered, the incident. I we there's no way that you got dash. Tell that to my fucking uterus, you bastard, bellowed Tsunade as she took a step around Jiraiya, who was still doing his fish imitation, towards to Minato as her murderous auntie. Returned full force. Tsunade-sama, please, begged Shizen. The dark-haired girl was fearful of what the stress would do to not only the baby but to her sensei as well. Even the little piglet Tonto. Trying to get her master to calm down by biting and pulling at Tsunade's high-heeled sandals. These actions started to calm herself down once more as she tried taking even more deep breaths followed by mentally counting to 10. It was at this point that Jiraiya's brain started to reboot before he quickly appeared in front of Minato on bended knees and started crying tears of joy. Minato, my boy. I never thought I could be more proud of you than when you created the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, or when you became Hokage, B. You have surpassed me yet again and did what I could never do, you slept with Tsunade, exclaimed the crying toad sage as the twin rivers of proud perspiration continued to his cheeks please he suddenly shouted as he raised his eyes to meet his students and roughly grabbed onto his trademark Hayori, tell me what it was like to partake in the f those heavenly bosoms of hers was she a moaner or a screamer please i need to know the yandame and sandame didn't know how to react to this installment Jiraiya suddenly stood up and went into a thinking pose. Although, now that I think about it, I should have known that Tsunade liked younger men. I mean, there had to be some. As to why she never seemed to fall for my manly charms. Still, I never took Tsunade as a cougar, one, he pondered casually. This, of course, had not helped the mother-to-be to keep her calm. 
She was barely containing her temper after Jiraiya began to beg for information on the night that led to all O. The fact that she was also in the beginning of her first trimester where her emotions were beginning to go out of whack, and she had already suffered some mood swings early. That was not helping matters either. With all of that combined, when her teammate made the remark of saying she was a cougar it was the final straw that broke the camel's BA. The elder Sarutobi smacked his palm to his face and covered his eyes in embarrassment, partially because Jiraiya was never one of his brightest pupils, and also because he wa. Have to see the dismemberment and murder of someone he considered a son at the hands of someone he considered a daughter. The Sandane had the right idea since Tsunade swiftly pounced on Jiraiya like a real-life cougar while screaming out, pervert, before proceeding to beat him within an inch of. Minato, who was still in astonishment at what Tsunade had told him, spared a small part of his mind to feel sorry for his sensei since it technically was his fault that the man wa. Probably about to be sent the afterlife. Not even a few seconds in the self-proclaimed super pervert was screaming out in pain and begging for mercy, receiving none as Tsunade continued to beat the sage to within a. His life. After about 10 minutes or so, in which Tsunade had mauled Jiraiya to the point that he didn't even look human anymore and shouldn't even be alive by all rights, Shizun had f. Been able to calm her sensei down again. Minato took this moment to start the conversation again. Are you sure? I mean well, of course you're sure, you're a mednin, but how, I mean, well, of course I know how, b. You have, do, or, well, by all that's holy, what are we going to do, he cried as he held his aching head in frustration. He just wasn't mentally prepared for all of this. You'd better not be thinking beyond, how are we going to explain this to the council or everyone else in the village, because if you're thinking of me getting rid of it dash. Sunit. As she felt her temper rising again, the growing need to neuter the blonde-haired man with a dull scalpel and no sedative beginning to run through mind. No. I would never think of ever forcing you to get rid of it. Minato desperately stammered out. He had always wanted to start a family, even if this wasn't exactly how he planned. It. Thankfully, Minato's quick response was able to soothe Tsunade's rising anger a little and sated her desire to castrate the younger man at the very least. Well then, you better not be thinking, who's it going to live with, because I'm not going stay in this cursed village. I've already lost nearly everyone I ever cared about to it in. Not going to lose my child to it as well, she declared with perseverance. This led to Minato and Tsunade discussing, more like arguing, rather, about what they were going to do. Dealing with the prospect of a newborn was hard in general, but in this. It might as well been planning to survive the apocalypse. As Tsunade and Minato were conversing, Hiruzen watched them and couldn't help but grin. While this certainly threw a major wrench in the works of both Minato's and Tsunade. Just might prove to be a really good thing for both of them. Since, with a child, Tsunade might finally come out of her depression that she had been spiraling down since the loss of her lover, Dan, and her little brother, Nawaki. The Waisin. Hokage knew that when she was with Dan they had often talked about having children and Tsunade made it obvious she wanted nothing more. Of course, that dream had sadly. Him. Now it seemed that fate had decided to finally give his former student some measure of happiness by giving her the chance to reclaim that dream. Even though he knew th. Tsunade would be disappointed that it was not Dan's child she was carrying, it still didn't change the fact that it was her child. She would never get rid of it and would love it all. Same, he was sure of that. He also knew that with a child there was a good chance that Tsunade might return to Kanoha as well, although it would not be right now, but given t. Just might. From personal experience, the Sarutobi clean had understood that the power of love between a parent and its child could heal almost any emotional wound. There was also the chance that this child could help Minato out as well since he had never gotten over the loss of his parents last year. They had been killed by IWA assassins WH. Somehow managed to sneak into the village. Their murder was retaliation for a major defeat that IWA had suffered at Minato's hands. 
Although Minato had killed those responsi, affected him greatly. What was not widely known was that he was secretly afraid to start a relationship with anyone. The doubt that was seeded into his mind from his loss gave small fear of not being able to protect those he loved. After the event it had taken quite a while for Jiraiya to get Minato out of his depression, but the blonde had never been th. His and Tsunade's future child might be exactly what he needed to heal any lingering wounds to his heart. Hiruzen grinned a bit more when he thought of the child and about how powerful it would be considering the rich lineage that would flow its veins. Having its great-grandfather. Shodane Hokage, great-granduncle the Naidame Hokage, mother the slug princess and strongest Kunoichi alive and father the legendary Kanoha no Kiroi Senko, Kanoha's yell. And Yandame Hokage, the potential seemed limitless. With just both its parents being Kage-level shinobi alone the child would be powerhouse, a monster, in a good way, of Ku. Hokage in the making that could very well surpass all the previous Hokages. The former Hokage then began to imagine holding an amazingly strong little warrior with godlike C. Control on his knees and it made him smile all the more. As he thought about this, however, he also thought of something else that made him frown. Deciding to make himself known to the bickering duo, Hiruzen cleared his throat loudly so that they would take notice of him. Now that I have your attention, I believe that there is a matter that you are forgetting that is of great importance to discuss. What is it? asked a still fuming Tsunade. Your child, or, to be more precise, its life, the Sandame sternly announced. Huh? Both Minato and Tsunade sounded in unison. Hiruzen eyed them to make sure they were paying the utmost attention. Tell me, Tsunade, does anyone else know that you are pregnant with Minato's child or that you're preg? All? Other than you, Shizun, the pervert here, and this bastard, then no, said Tsunade pointing at Jiraiya and Minato respectively. Good, he replied. Good. Why is that good? Tsunade asked with a cocked brow. Your child's life would be in great danger otherwise is why. Something like this is extremely dangerous and will not remain a secret forever. From the moment it is born into tea. Your child will have a target placed on it by other villages, organizations, and factions of shinobi inside and outside of Kanoha. The words seemed to start piercing into everyone's brains so he continued. They will attempt to kidnap your child in the hopes of holding it hostage to force you to do what they want or to train it to fight for them. Other villages may just kidnap it and breeding to rebuild the Senju clan in their territory because even today your clan's power and prestige is still well known and respected all over the elemental nations. Many vil would love nothing more than to have that at their disposal. Those very villages and organizations may even decide to send assassins and have your child killed to prevent the V. Thing from occurring here in Kanoha, and let's not forget that both you and your clan still have many enemies out there that would like nothing more than to end the Senju Blue. Once and for all or would just like to hurt you by killing your child, he ended deathly serious. This of course made Tsunade go white in fear, not for herself but for her child. She hadn't really thought of the dangers her child would be in by her simply being its mother, and more focused on the here and now with her raw emotions guiding her to this point. She instinctually wrapped both her arms around her abdomen protectively as more and more dangerous possibilities swam through her mind for her child's future. And when word gets out that Minato is the father, the child will be placed in even greater danger. Like with Tsunade, outside forces will do everything within their power to turn. Eliminate him just like your parents, Minato. A pained look to cross the young Kage's face. And don't forget IWA would be at the top of that list all things considered during the ending your family would have them frothing at the mouth if given the opportunity. So what do we do then? Because if you're saying that I have to abandon my child then you have dash, Tsunade barely managed to growl before she was interrupted. No, of course not, Tsunade. I would never think of asking you and Minato to do such a thing, Hiruzen quickly said, seeing where his former student's line of thought was going. 
father he knew how painful it would be to ask a parent to give up his or her child. He himself would sooner rip off his own arm than give up any of his own children and most CE. Wouldn't ever ask someone else to do something that he couldn't. He also knew that if he did force her to give up the child she would never forgive him. The heartbreak of losing her baby would also most likely send her into an even deeper death. One that she would never recover from and would inevitably cause her to drink herself to death. He didn't like the thought of adding another mental scar to his surrogate daw. Everyone close to her, all because of some rash decision. Besides, he knew Tsunade would protect her child no matter what and from whoever tried to harm it. From past experience they all knew that there was nothing in this world M. Dangerous than a mother protecting its child, especially if that mother happened to be Tsunade, and may Kami have mercy on whatever foolish soul that tried to do the child H. Tsunade definitely would not. What I mean, Tsunade, is that we have to be careful and plan out what we should do. That's all. If we don't, we could be putting your child in danger. That is all I'm suggesting. Man said. He's right. We have to be careful for our child's sake at least. Perhaps you could come back to the village and dash, said Minato before being interrupted. No. I told you before I will not stay in this accursed village. Short of Shizun, too, and this child I've lost every single member of my family and clan to it. I will not lose another. This village again, she stubbornly said as she stomped her foot down on the floor, causing the room to shake and making her point clear. But, Tsunade, you can't go around traveling while you're pregnant. What if you're attacked? Or something happens and we weren't there to help? You're putting our child in death. Please think what is best for it, pleaded Minato. I said no and that's my final answer. Here isn't cut in quickly to prevent another argument from happening. Perhaps there can be a compromise, he stated, causing both Minato and Tsunade to look at the former Hokage. Like what? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes. For the past several years the small nearby farming village of Mihara has sent several requests to us asking to send a medic or medical mean to their village. Their community ha. Huh? Doctor to treat the injured and sick and they usually have to travel here to get any help, or send someone to bring back medical aid depending on the situation. Now, if they had own doctor to train someone there, then they could help themselves. My solution is that you too, he indicated Tsunade and Shizun, go there where you can help the people a someone to help with their minor illnesses and injuries that they suffer from. In doing so there should be little to nothing for you to do. Also, since the village is near us an hour. Forces have roots near it, help can quickly arrive quickly and with little trouble given something happens to you while you're there. Not to mention that if Minato gives you one. Special Kanai he can use his Hiration no Jutsu to immediately teleport there at any time or when you need help. Therefore, you each get what you want. Tsunade doesn't name in the village like she wants, but she is near enough so that help can arrive quickly if she needs it like Minato wants. Also, the village of Mihara even gets what they want, so it's win for everyone, he finished as he picked up his pipe from the floor, it having dropped from his grip when Tsunade made her announcement following her dramatic entrance. H. It and started to puff smoke out to let the calming scent of tobacco filter through his nostrils. After Minato and Tsunade heard Sarutobi's solution, they thought about it for a few minutes and both nodded in agreement. To them it seemed acceptable enough to ease each other. Minds. Fine then. I'll just get some things from the hospital before I head out to the village to set things up. If I need anything, I'll send one of my slug summons to tell you, Tsunade. Before you go, Tsunade, take this, Minato said as he took out one of his Hiration Kanai from his pouch before gently handing it to her. She took the Kanai and nodded her that. Before turning to walk out of the office through the broken doorway. Shizun and Tauntin loyally followed after giving a half-hearted farewell. Once Tsunade had left out of earshot, both Minato and Hiruzen let a sigh of exhaustion. 
Their talk with Tsunade and the bombshell she had dropped had drained them both more. They had thought possible. Jiraiya, on the other hand, was lying forgotten in a heap till he started groaning in pain. He was covered in black and blue bruises and bumps and his legs and back were in a myriad of shapes and angles that they definitely shouldn't be. Both Minato and Hiruzen wondered how the super pervert was even alive after what happened to him and if he had some kind of Kekiai Genkai, bloodline limit, that was the so. His ability to survive that kind of beating. Hell, with all of his past beatings over his numerous peeping sessions this only supported the possibility. Minato, I think you should take him to the hospital where they can at least try to fix him, though we may have to ask Tsunade to do so if they can't. Hiruzen muttered as he be. Gazed down at Jiraiya's poor form. Yeah, although it's his own fault that he usually ends up like this. These kind of things would never happen to him if he could just control those perverted urges and thoughts oh. Blonde said exasperatedly. True, but if he didn't then we wouldn't have those books of his to enjoy. Besides, I'm told that an artist must suffer for his art and Jiraiya often refers himself as an artist with tea. Novels of his, Hiruzen and Minato just smirked at each other before the latter used a shunshin to quickly take Jiraiya to the hospital. We certainly live in interesting times, don't we? The Sandame thought with a slight chuckle as he looked out the window to overlook the beautiful village in its entirety. Not applicable. 1. Not the big cat. Cougar is also a nickname given to the type of woman at about 40 years of age or older who exclusively pursues very young men. 2. Shizen would have been Tsunade's niece-in-law or something close to that, had her and Dan married. Well that's another chapter done. Hoped you all liked it and the next chapter will be about the attack on Kanoha and Minato sealing the Kyubi into Naruto. Also, for those of you who are asking me if Naruto is going to have Mokutan, the Naidame water abilities, or any other abilities you will all find out what he will have in the next chapters. Please read and review since I like to know what you all think of the story so far and if you have any suggestions about the story that might improve it or make it more interest. Say them since I open to any and all suggestion will reply to you on my opinion on them since I always reply to my reviewers. Also please note that flames are unwelcome and will be ignored since if you don't like my story, then stop reading it since I force no one to read any of my stories. Next chapter will be up as soon as I can get it up.